Lex Watton's case is really unprecedented in um, the um, in the history of the criminal law because I don't remember in my 30 years of practice one other person that uh, had a gag order applied to them as a condition of their parole. And most of you know the history of the Lex Watton case. Lex Watton is the only person that was convicted out of the death of um, Cameron Dumagee in Palm Island in 2004. The perpetrator of that crime, Chris Hurley, a sergeant of police in Queensland, um, was acquitted by an all-white jury uh, of uh, Dumagee's death. Uh, and Lex Watton, who was a council representative on Palm Island, a leader and an elder within the Indigenous community in Palm Island, is the only person to have been convicted as a result of that very sorry and sad episode in Australian history. Lex Watton um, was ultimately convicted in about 2008, as, as I recall, uh, of one, one count of riot. He was sentenced to a term of imprisonment of six years uh, and was said to be eligible for parole after serving two years. Um, and he's been released recently, or more recently, from custody with his special condition that he not speak to the media or attend any public assembly. As I said, it's a special condition of parole that's just unprecedented. It could not happen in Victoria because we have a charter of, a, charter of rights that allows people to have freedom of assembly and freedom of speech. That's an adaptation of the um, International Convention of Civil and Political Rights. It's a convention that's been adopted in just about every European Union country uh, who also have a Human Rights Act that recognises the significance of those, um, those fundamental freedoms. Lex Watton could not have received the same conditions of parole if he was in the United States. They have a Bill of Rights that protect individual rights, including freedom of speech and freedom of association. Um, it could not happen in New Zealand, it could not happen in Canada, yet it happens here in what's said to be a pluralist, pluralist robust, democratic society. Well, um, friends, uh, we know that we pay lip service to those um, fundamental principles in this country and it depends on where you stand in the um, social demographics as to whether you can enjoy those freedoms. If you're one of the marginalised, if you're from um, the Indigenous community, if you are uh, an, an asylum seeker or if you are uh, of a minority ethnic group, then you don't enjoy the same freedoms as those that are in the mainstream white community. What and you about phone and uh, Lex, Lex Watton, what about phone Lex Watton um, who is, uh, as I said, a leader, a leader within, this, within the Palm Island community, um, who's with, a leader within the Palm Island community, uh, is being repressed and suppressed by these conditions. It's an affront to our democratic principles, and this isn't an issue that just applies to people within Queensland. It's an issue that should apply to all people within the Australian community. We need to protest, not just in Queensland, but the breadth of the Commonwealth, because this is a, an, an affront and an outrage to those of us that subscribe to those democratic principles. Um, congratulations on the work of the Association or the Committee uh, for bringing this to the attention of the general community because it needs to be promoted. Um, if it's Lex Watton one day, who is it the next? We've seen an incremental erosion of our rights since 9-11 under the guise of counter-terrorism. We've seen the adaptation of those laws shamefully in the World Economic Forum protest. We've seen an adaptation of them in the youth, uh, youth uh, World, World Youth Day in Sydney where we've had exclusion zones, we've had the prospect of arrest without cr any criminal offending and more shamefully we've seen them adapted in the industrial context in the Australian Building and Construction Commission. Um, the um, Human Rights Law Centre has taken on the challenge of, uh, of Lex Watton's case and hopefully um, in the middle of this year or in the, the third quarter of this year there'll be a challenge to the High Court as to those conditions of uh, his parole. I expect the High Court will say this is an attack on those fundamental 
principles, those fundamental freedoms, and I expect that they should overturn um, those conditions of parole. Because Lex Watton should not remain the only person in Australia subject to such draconian conditions. Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to speak to you, and congratulations on the great work you're doing.